Okay, so, <coughs> um, so let us recall uh, what we are trying to do is try to uh, give the structure of a Riemann surface to the upper half plane modulo the action of the unimodular uh, group namely uh, PSL 2 Z okay. So you, we take the projective special linear group these are Mobius transformations with integer entries uh, they preserve the upper half plane okay uh, and uh, we, we want to look at the orbits for this action the set of orbits and want to say that that is a uh, Riemann surface okay. Um, so and then we want to show finally that this Riemann surface is uh, biholomorphic to the to the complex plane. So the first question that arose was how do you make this into a Riemann surface how do you give a Riemann surface structure on U mod PSL 2 Z. So uh, more generally the question was uh, suppose you had uh, say a Riemann surface and you had a group of holomorphic automorphisms of the Riemann surface subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms can you divide by that subgroup to get a quotient which is also a Riemann surface so that was the original question. Um, well we have seen uh, examples of this for example in the case of the universal cover okay uh, what happens is that uh, the, uh, the you have the universal covering space of a Riemann surface and then if you go model of the deck transformation group which is identifiable with the uh, fundamental group of the base space then the quotient is exactly the base space okay. And then uh, more generally I told you that this is happening because of uh, uh, a certain property of the action of the group which is called uh, properly discontinuous action alright. But then um, uh, so this uh, definition of properly discontinuous action that I explained in the last lecture uh, was, th was a definition that uh, involved deck transformations okay. And, uh, and you know that uh, this definition uh, presupposed that the group was acting without fixed points okay. So it is it's so what it says is that if you have a Riemann surface uh, or more generally even a topological space okay and if you have a group of uh, uh, automorphisms which act properly discontinuously then divide you can divide by that group namely you can take the set of orbits under that group and that will automatically become a Riemann surface if the original space was already a Riemann surface okay. And uh, this definition of uh, properly discontinuous action was a definition that presupposed that there were uh, no fixed points because this definition of properly discontinuous action was that given any point there is a small neighborhood of the point which uh, is completely moved by every element of G different from the identity. Okay, which is completely moved away from this from itself by uh, any element of G different from the, any element of the group uh, which is different from the identity. But as but but then uh, this is not helpful for us uh, directly uh, because uh, when you are trying to look at the action of PSL 2 Z on the upper half plane there are uh, uh, fixed points there are elliptic Mobius transformations uh, for which there are fixed points. So the group PSL 2 Z is not acting on you with fixed points and therefore you cannot do you cannot simply use this theorem to divide by PSL 2 Z okay. So what we need is we need a slightly more uh, relaxed definition of what a properly discontinuous action means okay a, a definition which will also uh, help you to get quotients when there are fixed points okay which is what we need okay. So let me recall that definition so the definition was as follows so we had uh, uh, so uh, uh, so x uh, um, maybe I will confine myself to uh, uh, so, so let me make the definition yes, let me recall this. So you have x uh, topological space uh, g uh, subgroup of uh, automorphisms of x of course instead of topological space I could have of course taken also 
uh, Riemann surface and in this case in that case G would be a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms of X okay. Uh, uh, so we say G, uh, G is said to act properly discontinuously at it is not if number 1 uh, so this is the first condition is about the uh, is about fixed points okay. So you know in the in the earlier definition of uh, properly discontinuous action okay there were no fixed points every non trivial uh, uh, group element every non trivial automorphism was not supposed to fix any point and this is how this is exactly how a deck transform every non trivial deck transformation acts a deck transformation no deck transformation different from the identity can have a fixed point okay. So here so that means uh, that means the set uh, the set of uh, group elements that fix a point has to be trivial this was what was there in the earlier definition okay. But now what we will do is we will relax that and say that the set of elements of G which fix this point uh, uh, need not be trivial but it has to be finite okay. So the that is the first condition uh, uh, the, the stabilizer G is at G is at G x naught which is the set of all uh, G belonging to G such that G of x naught equal to x naught is finite is a finite subgroup. Of G, okay. Uh, of course, the stabilizer will be a subgroup by definition, and all we want is that it is finite. And uh, the case uh, when uh, there are no fixed points, that is, when the action is fixed point free, this, this stabilizer has to be trivial. Okay, that is, it contains is just the is a subgroup which contains only the identity element, the identity transformation. Okay, then and and the second condition is about uh, this neighbor uh, the existence of a neighborhood which uh, for which uh, the properly discont the, the proper discontinuous of uh, discontinuity of the action is uh, uh, is demonstrated okay so in the earlier case uh, when the group is acting freely the proper the properly discontinuous definition was you have a neighborhood which if you operate by an element of g it is completely displaced from the original neighborhood that is the, the image neighborhood does not intersect the original neighborhood okay. Now what we will do is we will demand that only of uh, we will relax that we will demand that only of elements outside the stabilizer and we will also demand that that neighborhood is preserved by the stabilizer okay. Of course we cannot demand that of elements in the stabilizer because after all uh, if there is going to be a G which uh, is going to fix X naught okay then uh, uh, the uh, any neighborhood uh, of x naught will also contain x naught uh, when it is operated upon by g okay so so here is the second condition which is also a relaxation of the earlier definition that is uh, there exists a neighborhood uh, u sub x naught uh, of x naught of course uh, uh, i should say open neighborhood as an open neighborhood of course whenever I say neighborhood of course I mean open neighborhood such that such that uh, G uh, uh, G for every element uh, uh, in the step small g in the stabilizer subgroup uh, so this is the uh, so so in fact uh, I cannot let me also write this as tab stabilizer of x naught in G okay which is just G sub x naught okay. F for every element in the stabilizer uh, this uh, neighborhood is preserved okay and for every element outside the stabilizer the, uh, the, the effect the image of this neighborhood under that element is does not intersect the original neighborhood okay. So let me write that out G u x naught intersection u x naught 
is is empty for all g not in stabilizer okay so you see this is a more uh, uh, more weakened definition of what is meant by a properly discontinuous action okay and uh, uh, so the finally uh, what we are uh, trying to do or what what we are going to prove is that the action of psl to z on the upper half plane satisfies these conditions okay that is something we are going to see and we are also going to see that whenever uh, you have a group of Mobius transformations which acts on a domain in the uh, in the extended complex plane uh, which is uh, in this in this sense properly discontinuously then you can divide by that group of uh, Mobius transformations and obtain a Riemann surface okay. So, uh, Um, the only difference between uh, uh, this situation and the earlier situation was that in the earlier situation one gets a, a real covering of Riemann surfaces in fact we get a uh, we get a regular covering as I was explaining to you in the last lecture but in this case what you will get is you will get something that is a covering only on an open set below okay but it will have but there will be a boundary where the map is ramified okay. So, there will be a ramification locus and it will be what is called a ramified covering of Riemann surface. So, the, the so the what I want you to understand at the outset is the earlier definition of properly discontinuous action what happens is that when you divide by such a group with such an action what you get is actually a covering of Riemann surfaces okay whereas if you use this definition what you will not get what you will get is not a covering of Riemann surfaces but what you will get is what is called a branched covering or ramified covering of Riemann surfaces okay. So, that is the difference okay and this branching comes because of the existence of uh, uh, isotropies stabilizers finite stabilizers okay. So, so, uh, so now um, uh, now I am going to uh, I am going to just restrict my situation to uh, you know Mobius subgroups of Mobius transformations acting on uh, C union infinity the external complex plane okay. So, uh, so let me make this definition so I will make this uh, uh, so let me write this uh, let uh, G be a subgroup of PSL 2 C uh, which are just Mobius transformations let G be a subgroup of Mobius transformations acting on uh, C union infinity. This is the extended complex plane if you want uh, to think of it like that you can also think of it as the Riemann sphere which is P 1 uh, uh, via the stereographic projection okay okay. Now, what we do is uh, uh, we set we set omega of g okay to be the set of all z in c union infinity set of all uh, complex numbers in the extended plane where uh, g acts properly discontinuously at at uh, z okay. So, you see the first uh, thing that we will have to establish is that this definition is an that this definition of properly discontinuous action has got some good properties okay. So, that is what I am trying to do. So, what I am doing is given a group G of Mobius transformations which will act on the extended plane I am collecting all those uh, elements in the extended complex plane or at which g acts properly discontinuously okay. So, you see when we define properly discontinuously uh, properly discontinuous action it was defined for the action of the group at a point okay. So, uh, there may be points where the group is acting properly discontinuously and there are going to be points where the group is not going to act properly discontinuously okay. And of course, what we are trying to say is that the points where the group is acting properly discontinuously is the right set to work and uh, one of the good properties that we are going to prove now is that that set is open okay. So, uh, and of course, we are going to let me put lambda of g to be 
the complement. So, this is a set of points where the group does not act properly discontinuously. So, it is just C union infinity uh, from that I take away uh, the uh, uh, the set of points where uh, the group acts properly discontinuously okay. So, so this so there are names for this um, obvious names uh, the set of points where uh, G acts properly discontinuity uh, discontinuously is called the region of dis discontinuity of G. This is called the region of discontinuity of G, and of course the set of points. Um, uh, so uh, though it says region of discontinuity of G, uh, somehow the word discontinuous uh, puts one off and one feels that it's something bad. But actually here it's something good. Okay, so the region of discontinuity is a is a is a is a very good region. Okay, it is exactly the region where you can go modulo G and get a Riemann surface. Okay, so don't be misled by this by this uh, name or by this terminology and lambda g uh, capital lambda of g is called the limit set of g okay. So, the uh, well the first uh, so the here is the first uh, uh, let me say uh, theorem okay. So, I should uh, um, I should have before I before I say this I should say the following thing we say that the group is uh, a Kleinian group after Felix Klein who a German mathematician who pioneered study of geometry uh, uh, interact I mean and its interactions with analysis and algebra okay. So, uh, we say the group is Kleinian if there is at least one point where the group acts properly discontinuously okay. <coughs> All right, so that's a definition. Okay, so maybe I'll write that definition first. Uh, let me write that down. Uh, G G is said to be Kleinian if omega of G is non-empty. So there is at least one point where the group acts properly discontinuously. Okay. So, here is the theorem okay. So, here is the theorem which tells you that uh, uh, the the when a group acts the set of points where the group acts properly discontinuously for a Kleinian group namely the region of discontinuity that is actually an open subset okay. So, here is the theorem omega g is an open subset if G is a Kleinian group. Okay, so here's the theorem. So uh, the point is that uh, this fits in with the general philosophy that any good property, uh, which is defined at points, uh, should be an open property. Okay, so if you try to define, you know, uh, holomorphicity, for example. Uh, you if a function is holomorphic at a point then it is holomorphic in every point in a neighborhood of that point. So, these are all properties which are which you define at a point they are good because they are kind of true for uh, if they are true at a point then they are true in a small neighborhood of the point okay. So, that is exactly what we are saying here uh, what we are saying is if you take a point of omega g then there is a whole open uh, there is a small disc surrounding that point which is full of points again in omega g okay. So, if a so that means that the moment uh, uh, G is a Kleinian group that is the moment that there is you know that there is at least one point where the group acts properly discontinuously you know that there is a whole disc surrounding that point where the group is going to act properly discontinuously okay. So, um, so what is the proof so the here uh, when we get into proof uh, we will use some inputs from complex analysis okay. So, uh, so here is the proof. So, well, um, so first let's. Uh, uh, so we'll, we we can consider two types of uh, points uh, in omega g. Okay, uh, recall a point in omega g is a point at which g acts properly discontinuously, and the stabilizer is finite. So let's first dispose of the case when the stabilizer is trivial. Okay, okay. So let uh, is it not be a point of omega of g with uh, stabilizer subgroup trivial 
ok. So, uh, now uh, it is very clear if you think about it that uh, there is uh, a whole disk surrounding z naught which all at which also uh, the group will act properly discontinuously and all the points will have st trivial stabilizers. Why is this so? That is because you see if z naught uh, uh, is uh, if, if the stabilizer is trivial okay so you look at the second condition here there is there is an, an open neighborhood u sub z naught of z naught such that for every g mind you the stabilizer is trivial that means for every g which is different from the identity uh, g times that neighborhood will not intersect that neighborhood okay so 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 let me write that down. So uh, there exists uh, an open neighborhood of Z naught such that uh, I should say U sub such that G dot U sub Z naught intersection U sub Z naught or well if you want I can write G dot U sub Z naught uh, or G of U sub Z naught. Uh, this means the image of u sub z naught under g okay uh, this is this is empty uh, for all g not equal to identity for all g different from the identity okay so there is an so there is a there is a neighborhood like this okay now you see so if i if i draw a diagram here is my z naught there is a there is a neighborhood of course it need not look like a disk but uh, i'm i'm just drawing it for uh, ease of representation so you see so here is my u sub z not okay and if i take a g not equal to identity and apply to this what i'll get is i'll get i'll get a, a, a holomorphically isomorphic uh, 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 neighborhood which is namely namely g of u sub z not and this will be uh, uh, a neighborhood of g of z okay and these two do not intersect alright. Now it is very clear that you see uh, if you take any z prime in in this neighborhood okay then it cannot have uh, it is it's tri its stabilizer will be trivial okay for for all for for every z prime in u z naught okay the stabilizer subgroup namely which is which is otherwise which otherwise we write as g sub z prime is trivial this is obvious because you know if there is a g element which fixes z prime then g of z prime equal to z prime but you see g of z prime is supposed to be here all right so what it will tell you is that that cannot happen if g is not the identity element so what it will tell you is that every z prime in this neighborhood has trivial stabilizer okay and it is also clear that every non trivial element of g is going to push this neighborhood away from itself. So you see the same neighborhood u z naught will also serve as a neighborhood for z prime for verifying the condition of a properly discontinuous action of g at z prime okay. So, um, uh, clearly uh, uz0 is a neighborhood an open neighborhood of uh, uh, z prime that that verifies the condition that g acts properly discontinuously at z prime okay. So, uh, so what is the moral of the story the moral of the story is you take a point with tri trivial stabilizer you take a point uh, uh, of the uh, a point in the region of discontinuity okay a point z naught where the group acts properly discontinuously and where the stabilizer is trivial then you can find a whole neighborhood where again the group acts properly discontinuous 
Lee and the stabilizers are also going to be trivial. So, the moral of the story is if you take the subset of omega of g consisting of points with trivial stabilizer that becomes an open subset of the complex uh, of the extended complex plane ok. So, uh, so let me state that hence the, the subset of points of omega of g omega of g with trivial stabilizers is an open subset in the external complex plane ok. Now, so, so we have dispensed of the case with uh, uh, the case of uh, points with trivial stabilizer. The, uh, the more serious uh, case non trivial case is that of points with uh, uh, non trivial stabilizer. So, we have to look at a point z naught uh, at which the action of g is properly discontinuous, but the stabilizer is not trivial. Now, go back to this condition uh, the stabilizer has to be finite ok. So, uh, what happens in that case right. So, the so, so we need to uh, so, so we so we look at uh, is there not in omega g with g is that not uh, finite uh, and non trivial ok. So, that means you look at uh, those points uh, where the stabilizer is uh, not just uh, the trivial uh, element ok. So, what happens in this case? So, at this point some analysis has to be brought into the picture right. So, I will roughly tell you uh, uh, what we are going to do what I am going to prove. So, you see so here is you know uh, well let me uh, suppose this is omega g all right, and here is my z naught ok. What I am going to tell you is I am going to tell you that actually you see this uh, uh, that for a point z naught with st stabilizer finite I am going to say that there is going to be a neighborhood of the z naught ok which uh, you know it looks like uh, so there is a neighborhood surrounding z naught which looks like uh, a neighbor uh, it looks like the unit disc ok delta. So, this is the unit disc in the complex plane. So, delta is set of all z such that mod z is less than 1 ok. So, what I am going to show is that you see there is a neighborhood of z naught ok uh, which is contained in omega of g alright uh, or let us not even say that for the moment there is a neighborhood of z naught which looks like a disc ok and the action of g sub z naught on this neighborhood ok. So, it is going to be a neighborhood which is going to be uh, fixed by g sub z naught the finite uh, this finite group alright and it is going to be moved completely away by other elements of uh, uh, by, by elements which do not stabilize z naught ele elements of the group which do not fix z naught already such a neighborhood is available. Uh, this u z naught is available already ok. So, what I am trying to say is that you can in fact choose a neighborhood which actually looks like uh, the unit disc and such that the action of g z naught on this neighborhood ok looks like the action of a finite group on this unit disc a finite group of rotations about the origin ok. So, uh, what I am going to prove is that you can find this neighborhood here ok and in fact a holomorphic isomorphism of this neighborhood with the unit disc ok. When I do that this g z naught which is a finite group it is going which is going to act on this neighborhood if I if I transport its action via this identification of this neighborhood with the unit disc ok. Then the action of 
uh, the group there will look like a finite group of rotations. So, you know for example, if this is uh, let us say uh, suppose the order of this group is uh, let us say uh, uh, say 3 okay, then you what you will get is you will get you know uh, you will get the, uh, the action of uh, the cube roots of unity on the uh, uh, on the unit disc okay and well these re so uh, and that will map to something here if, if I draw it so this is how it is going to look. So as so the, the therefore the point is what is going to happen is Z0 will be the only point which is uh, uh, fixed by the stabilizer every other point Z prime is going to just move okay and it will so it will have uh, it will have uh, so the, this this group will act like a group of rotations okay so every other this is a, every other point will uh, not have any stabilizer so the upshot of this whole discussion will be that you see give me a point z0 which has finite non trivial stabilizer then i can find a disk like neighborhood of that point z0 where every other point has uh, trivial stabilizer and the action of the group on the stabilizer group on that neighborhood will exactly be exactly be the action of a finite group of rotations of the unit disc about the origin okay so this is the this is the beautiful thing that comes out okay so so how does one prove that so uh, so let me let me sketch that okay so so there are two so there are two inputs uh, from um, there are two inputs from complex analysis that we use. So you see, uh, so what I do is, well, um, I'm going to take a prove a, let me say, proposition or even uh, it's bad to call it a lemma. Okay. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, let H. Uh, uh, so let um, yeah so let v be an open neighborhood of zero in the complex plane okay and h b a uh, finite group of holomorphic automorphisms of uh, B which fix the origin okay. So uh, I am just trying to translate <coughs> uh, whatever I said into uh, a small result. So the situation is like this, so you see I have, so here is my complex plane and I have some uh, uh, there is some neighborhood V of the origin alright and what is happening is that I have a group H. So this group is see first of all it consists it is a, a finite group okay. So well uh, I can write the group as H1 etcetera up to Hn right and uh, these each Hi is a holomorphic automorphism of V that means it is a map from V to V. So each HI goes from V to V well, we managed to draw something exactly like V okay. So each HI maps uh, V back onto itself it is a holomorphic map and of course it is going to take origin to the origin and there are only finitely many HIs right. So then so I am going to claim exactly what I was explaining there then there exists a uh, simply connected neighborhood open neighborhood of course uh, D uh, of 
uh, 0 in V uh, and uh, uh, which is uh, on which on which uh, uh, H acts ok, a biholomorphic map f from d to delta the unit disk such that such that the action of h hat which is defined to be uh, this is the action on delta uh, that you get from the action of uh, uh, h on d ok. So, uh, uh, and of course, you know this this biholomorphic map will of course, take 0 to 0 ok, it goes to take 0 to 0 all right. And h hat is just well uh, it is conjugate to h by f. So, it is essentially uh, apply f inverse then apply h then apply f ok such that the action of this h hat on delta on delta is uh, 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 is a group of rotations is a finite group of rotations is a finite group of rotations <laughs> about the origin. So, uh, so so in other words, what we are saying is um, um, H hat is generate is a cyclic group. It's a finite cyclic group generated by rotation by uh, by an angle uh, which is two pi i uh, uh, two pi by uh, n, where uh, well n is the order of. Uh, so in this case, I think it is uh, if I take H one as identity, yeah. So where n is the order of the group. Okay, so. Uh, how does one prove this? So, for that there is a little bit of uh, mapping theory that one has to look at. So, the first thing I wanted to wanted to uh, wanted you to recall from complex analysis is the following thing. See suppose you have a mapping. So, this is the complex plane again and I am taking a mapping omega equal to h of z that is going from let us say the z plane to the omega plane ok. Now you see suppose I take a curve gamma ok and I uh, h is of course a holomorphic map right. Uh, then I then I will get well then I will get another <coughs> curve uh, I will get h of gamma ok I will get another curve another the image of this curve will be another curve there. And well, if you take a point, suppose I take a point Z naught and I take another point Z, okay, then I will get uh, uh, points here H of Z naught, and I will get a point uh, uh, H of Z, okay, and well, if I see if I if I join this line uh, from uh, z not to z all right then this angle is going to be the argument of uh, z minus z not okay so this is this is the argument of z minus z not and of course uh, whenever we say argument you have to one has to re read it modulo 2 pi okay and well if i do the same thing here uh, then this angle is going to be well uh, it is going to be argument of uh, h of z minus h of z naught ok. And now you know uh, this is something that probably you already have come across you know that you know uh, h h prime of z naught is by definition limit z tends to z naught. Of course, I am assuming h is a holomorphic map which means it is differentiable at each point ok in, in some domain 
where this curve is uh, which is an open connected set where this curve is being considered. So this is well if I write this down this is h of z minus h of z0 by z minus z0 okay. Now you see if I take arguments if I take arguments what I will get is is that I will get uh, well as I see if I let z z to tend to z0 then this line will become the tangent to the uh, curve gamma at z0 alright and this line will become the tangent to the image point uh, the tangent to the image curve at the image of the point z0 okay. So what this will tell you is that it will tell you argument of uh, the tangent to uh, gamma at z0 okay plus argument of h dash of z0 is equal to argument so of course when I say argument of the tangent I mean uh, 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 you I mean the angle made by the tangent uh, normally argument is defined for a complex number so this is abuse of language but what I mean by that is angle made by the tangent uh, with the x axis with the real axis okay. So and here I will I will have argument of uh, uh, argument uh, of the tangent to uh, h of gamma at h of z okay so you get this this is of course you know you have to assume that h dash of z0 is not 0 okay h dash of h dash I mean you do not want uh, uh, the derivative to vanish at z0 because if, the, if, if h dash of z0 is 0 then argument is not defined so if you want this to make sense the derivative should be non-zero okay so you get this relation just from this okay and uh, by taking a limit as that tends to z0. Now, well uh, try to apply it to, to our situation let us try to apply it to our situation. So in our situation what is happening is uh, so let us so what is so what is the curve I am going to consider so you see I have uh, uh, you know so let me again draw the diagram so I have may not exactly look the way it looks there that does not matter here is my B and here is let us say one of the H from the group capital H and uh, so here is again speed okay so let me draw this okay so you see uh, see if I now take let me now take for the curve let me take a disc uh, centered at the origin of radius uh, say some small r which is less than 1 okay. So what I am going to do is I am just going to take so let me just write it like this so this is this is just uh, uh, mod z uh, is equal to uh, r strictly less than 1 okay. So this is my curve alright so uh, so this is my gamma okay mind you uh, the h uh, that I am going to consider is a h in capital H so all these uh, small h are all uh, they are all biholomorphic maps okay therefore the derivatives cannot vanish okay the derivatives cannot vanish. So uh, so this condition that the derivative does not vanish uh, is always satisfied okay and uh, let me try to do the uh, uh, let me try to look at what happens to this curve okay. So uh, the claim is that the image of this uh, 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 the image of this uh, this disc okay the image of this disc uh, of course it will be uh, it will go to something here what I want to say the, the important geometric point is that the image is convex okay. So what I want to say is that you know when I take the image of this well it is something convex so I so be careful drawing it. So, well, so you know, it's something like this. Okay, well, I'm drawing an ellipse <laughs> because I don't want to draw a circle, but I don't want to draw anything else that will uh, manifestly look uh, non-convex. You know, a set is convex if you take two points in the set, then the line segment joining those two points is also in the set. Okay, so the point is that H uh, maps uh, this uh, curve 
onto a convex curve and the region inside this will go to a convex region okay. So, so the claim is uh, uh, for well of course uh, for r sufficiently small okay for r uh, sufficiently small h of uh, the the image under h of this disc mod z less than or equal to r uh, is convex is is a is a convex in v i mean it's convex uh, i don't need to say in v is convex okay so this is the claim now you see uh, if you apply if you apply this uh, uh, if you apply this condition okay if i take a point z not here okay if i take a point z not here and if i take its image there which is h of z not okay and if i put this condition here see the thing that i will get on the left side is see what is the argument of the tangent to uh, the curve at z not the argument of the tangent will be you see uh, the tangent will be uh, this tangent to this circle that will be pi by 2 plus the argument of z0 all right so what i will get here is we get pi by 2 plus argument of z0 okay plus argument of h dash of h dash of z0 <laughs> is equal to uh, uh, argument of a tangent to uh, h of uh, mod z is equal to r uh, at h of z okay this is what you get all right and you see let us try to look at the condition uh, see the 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 image of this curve will be the will be a curve there and the condition that uh, it encloses a convex region is that the the if you take the argument of the tangent that should continuously increase only then you will get a convex uh, you only then you will you will it enclose a convex region okay. See if a curve uh, if a curve uh, encloses a convex region okay then your the argument of the tangent has to continuously increase okay if the argument of the tangent decreases then the curve uh, uh, i mean it will it will just get cave inside and you will get a non convex portion okay so you know uh, uh, if you want you can easily look at a, a simple diagram like this um, you see if i if i if i have a curve uh, well you know if i take something like this uh, 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 the region and and suppose I look at the uh, region enclosed by this. This is not going to be convex because you know I have a point here, I have a point here, but the line segment joining these two points isn't inside, in, is not there in in my uh, set. Okay, uh, if I consider this interior, okay, this is not a convex region. And see what is happening. See the if you look at the argument of the tangent, you see it keeps on increasing. Okay, at some point it decreases and then it again increases you see this is what happens. So, the condition that this curve <coughs> is uh, convex curve which is the same as saying that the, the region enclosed by this curve is convex is the condition that this quantity here should be an increasing function of argument of z0 as z0 varies on the unit, unit circle okay. So, uh, 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 the condition that uh, h of uh, mod z is not equal to r is convex is equivalent to uh, pi by 2 uh, uh, so let me let me call this uh, let me call this equation as uh, star if you want okay. Uh, the 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 expression star is an increasing function 
function of arg's argument of z okay that is a condition and well uh, if you write it down so this is an exercise that condition turns out to be uh, the condition that 1 plus real part of z h double prime of z by h prime of z is positive okay uh, that is literally you know it is like taking the derivative of this term you are trying to take the derivative of this term with respect to arg argument of z okay of course replace z naught by z okay. So let me do that uh, um, well let me remove the subscript 0 and assume that z is moving on the uh, on this circle on the boundary on this boundary circle okay. So then I can remove the subscript z naught and consider all this as uh, you know functions <coughs> of z right then the condition is that this right hand side should be uh, an increasing function of arg argument of z and which means the left hand side should be an increasing function of argument of z and if you write it down it is literally like differentiating this with respect to argument of z and this is what you will get this is a little bit of uh, simple calculation that you can do okay. So but now notice that you know uh, if you take mind you this is a non zero number okay this is a non zero number and it is uh, it is a finite complex number for any given z uh, mind you h prime of z is non zero because the h is a holomorphic automorphism okay. So uh, this 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 is some finite complex number if you fix z okay and then uh, at least I can say that you know uh, this is some bounded quantity all right uh, but you see if I take z very close to the origin okay namely if I take uh, this r small r uh, an epsilon okay which is sufficiently small okay then uh, the contribution due to this term is going to be less and 1 plus that is certainly going to be uh, greater than 0 okay. So the moral of the story is that this is true if you take r sufficiently small okay. So, so let me write this uh, uh, which holds if r is sufficiently small okay if you take that means you take a sufficiently small disk okay then the image of that disk here will be a convex uh, region all right and this is for a given h but there are only finitely many h because this capital h is only a finite group therefore what you can do is you can pick an r which will work for every element of the group h okay. So uh, uh, and can uh, be can um, which holds if r is sufficiently small and can be made true uh, for all h in h okay. If, if I start with say h1 I will get an r1 then you take uh, h2 uh, I will get an r2 and then you take the minimum of all the ris okay then it will work all right. So um, so in that case now what we are going to do is we are going to put put you see uh, uh, d to be just uh, you take h i of uh, 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 this mod z less than or equal to r the small enough disk okay and simply take the intersection okay. What you will get what you will get is a convex you will get an open convex uh, neighborhood of the origin okay and this will be invariant under the group h okay. This will be in invariant under the group h because I have simply taken images by all the group elements and I am taking the intersection okay. So uh, then what will happen is d uh, will be uh, a simply connected neighborhood of the origin which is invariant under h okay. It will be simply connected because it is an open set and it is convex okay. This is the intersection of finitely many convex sets which contain the origin all right. So, the uh, 
so so let me uh, maybe I will erase this diagram then D is a simply connected open neighborhood of the origin in in V on which uh, uh, on which H acts okay um, maybe um, I think um, ah, okay so I guess one of you are wondering that I am taking the uh, closed disk so let me get rid of it so if I want something that is open I should take the image of an open set yeah good. So sometimes eavesdropping also helps <laughs> fine so yeah so that was a small error. So you see uh, so D is a simply connected open neighborhood of 0 in V on which H acts so I have gotten hold of this D. Now so you see we have proved the first part of the theorem there is a simply connected open neighborhood D of 0 in V on which H acts up to that we have got it all right then the second part of the uh, statement says there is a biholomorphic map of d to delta which takes 0 to 0 now that is uh, directly a consequence of the Riemann mapping theorem. So the Riemann mapping theorem says take any simply connected uh, open subset of the complex plane which is not the whole complex plane then it is biholomorphically equivalent to the unit disc and you can choose the biholomorphic map in such a way that any fixed point in this can be mapped to 0 okay. So, so by, by the Riemann mapping theorem theorem there exists a biholomorphic map f from d to delta with f of 0 equal to 0. So, uh, so what is happening is uh, you have got hold of uh, you have got hold of uh, 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 well again <coughs> I should be careful I am, I am trying to draw something that is convex uh, okay. Uh, so here is my so here is my D okay and the image of D is uh, is the unit disc um, uh, no not 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 in this diagram so I will have to draw this uh, so I will have to draw another diagram for this anyway let me draw it something like this. So I have well I have I have some <coughs> well I have some D and I have bi biholomorphic map of that into the unit disc okay and I define this group H hat which is just well uh, there is H is a group that is acting here on D okay now I can make it act on uh, delta because F is after all a biholomorphic map okay. So, what I what is my uh, what is the definition of H, uh, H hat it is just you take any element of H okay uh, first apply F inverse apply that element and then apply F where, well, uh, where of course 1 less than I can die less than I can. So this uh, this acts on delta namely it is a group of so it is a finite group of uh, automorphisms of the uh, unit disc which fix the origin okay which fix the origin okay <coughs> fixing the origin so now we have the second important in ingredient which comes from complex analysis so it is the following uh, result which is called which is which is one of the versions of what is called schwartz lemma so the schwartz lemma tells you take an take any automorphism of the unit disc which fixes the origin it has to be a rotation that is one version of Schwarz lemma which we want to use okay. So 
each of these maps is an automorphism of the unit disk which fixes the origin by Schwartz lemma each one is a rotation okay and so what you have is you have a finite group of rotations okay and therefore it has to be a cyclic group okay so the moral of the story is that uh, you get a uh, h hat will be just a cyclic group of rotations okay so by schwartz lemma H, H hat is a finite cyclic group of rotations. Namely, each one is rotation by a certain angle, and there are only finitely many angles. Take the least among them, take the smallest non zero angle. Uh, by which you have a rotation because this is a group and it is a finite group you will see that that will generate the whole group ok. So, uh, therefore, we have succeeded in getting hold of this statement. So, so the picture that emerges is that you see the uh, you have a finite group of holomorphic automorphisms of a neighborhood of the origin ok then uh, the way it acts is locally at the point uh, at the origin it is like the action of a dis uh, a finite group of rotations on the unit disc ok uh, which is uh, which is isomorphic to a disc like neighborhood uh, inside V of the origin ok. So, uh, therefore, so that that finishes the proof of that proposition and now we can go back to uh, uh, what we were trying to prove. So, I'll, let me just restate that and finish the proof. Uh, so, you see what we did uh, we took a point z naught in omega of g a point at which g acts properly discontinuously and where the stabilizer subgroup is not trivial. Okay. Then uh, you see by this uh, proposition okay. so my situation is see I have so what is the situation I have uh, I have some uh, neighborhood u z naught which is uh, the, the neighborhood that is given to me uh, because uh, uh, g acts properly discontinuously at z naught and this neighborhood is uh, you know uh, acted upon by this finite uh, stabilizer subgroup and it is pushed away from itself completely by every other element which does not fix z naught ok. By if necessary I can translate this z naught to the origin ok and I am in this situation ok and therefore, what I can do is that inside this uh, by that proposition inside this I can find uh, uh, well again problem of drawing something that is convex. So, let me draw something. So, I will get a convex neighborhood D uh, of the point z naught which is a disc like neighborhood namely this is this just looks like uh, uh, the unit disc ok and the so the under this map the group h uh, the in this case the group h is just g sub z naught h is g sub z naught that is what is acting on this neighborhood. Now, that corresponds to uh, the group h hat here ok and the group h hat is a group of rotation. So, it will act like this uh, say for example, if it is uh, uh, probably something like this all right. So, the action of g sub z naught on this will look like this uh, it will be like you know pieces of uh, uh, you know uh, pieces of the sectors moving uh, just being rotated. So, so this piece, so here what happens is let us say this piece goes goes to the next piece and so on ok. So, the same so in fact, I have not drawn it very nice very neatly uh, maybe I will remove this ok. So, so this piece goes to the next piece 
and this piece goes to this piece, this piece goes to this piece. That is how the group acts, okay. The group elements act, and that is going to be the same way in which uh, uh, the uh, the group elements are going to act here. Now it is very clear that if you take a point z prime which is different from z naught then uh, every element of the stabilizer of z naught is certainly going to move it every element of the stabilizer different from the identity is going to move it that tells you that this z prime uh, has to be a stabilizer okay. So let me write that down for all z prime belonging to d minus z naught g z prime is trivial because it is just going to move around the point in some sense okay and so th the stabilizer is trivial and of course you know uh, I can choose a small enough neighborhood of this z prime I can choose a small enough neighborhood of this z prime which is uh, uh, which is going to be completely moved away from itself by any non trivial element of this uh, stabilizer okay so i can so so this point is uh, uh, z prime and this neighborhood is u sub z prime okay and this neighborhood u sub z prime will satisfy the condition uh, will will help you to verify the condition that uh, g is acting properly discontinuously at z prime uh, with uh, with z prime uh, uh, with with z prime having no stabilizer okay uh, can choose z prime such that can can choose an open neighborhood uh, u z prime of z prime which is completely moved away from u z prime by every uh, uh, g uh, not equal to identity uh, in g z okay. So this implies that uh, 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 this 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 uh, this this neighborhood d is contained in omega of g okay so that finishes the proof so uh, let me uh, let me recall what we are saying what we are saying is you look at the set of points in the external complex plane where the group acts properly discontinuously then the set of points where the group is act going to act without fixed points that is an open subset because for every such point you can find a whole neighborhood where the group is going to act properly discontinuously and without fixed points okay. On the other hand you take a point where the group has a fixed point okay that means uh, there are the stabilizer is non trivial then also you continue to find a neighborhood of that a disc like neighborhood of that point which is su such that every other point except this one is going to be a point where the group acts without fixed points and properly discontinuously okay. So and in this way what you not what you uh, not what you get extra is the set of points where uh, g ha acts with finite stabilizers is discrete because you have separated two such things every such point where g acts with a finite non trivial stabilizer is surrounded by a, a whole uh, disc like neighborhood where g acts with trivial stabilizer. So the uh, another upshot of this is the set of points where g acts with finite non trivial stabilizer is a discrete subset of the external complex plane so let me write that down okay we also get the that that the set of points of mega g where g acts uh, uh, with non trivial finite stabilizers 
is discrete in C unit. So, the moral of the story is that uh, the action uh, when the group acts properly discontinuously okay, it is uh, and there is at least one point where it acts properly discontinuously namely you take a Kleinian group then it has uh, uh, very good properties. Okay. So, you precisely know how uh, the structure of the action looks at a point which has non trivial stabilizer okay, which is finite stabilizer. Okay. So, this will be helpful for us when a in, the in the forthcoming lectures to be able to give a quotient give a, to mod out by such a group and give a Riemann surface structure on the quotient okay. So, we will stop here.